guess this is like a raw vegan version of a Putinesca. I'm not really sure. You guys can tell me if it is or not. I've never had the regular Putinesca version. Um, I haven't even eaten gluten, like regular pasta noodles that contain gluten, oh my goodness, since I was probably 20, so like 18 years ago. Um, I started cutting gluten out of my diet at that time in my life. And then at that time, obviously, I didn't know anything about really about the raw food world and I didn't have Aspiralizer, but I would eat a lot of gluten-free pasta or gluten-free grains, you know, such as rice and amaranth and quinoa. Um, and so when, and I love pasta, pasta for me is such a comfort food and I always have on hand uh, lots of gluten-free pasta in my cupboard because I really just love the comfort that you get from just eating a really yummy pasta dish. And so when I discovered raw food and the magic of a spiralizer, I was so excited because there's so many different textures you can create with other different kinds of vegetables. I love spiralizing root vegetables, so beet, turnip, daikon radish, carrots. Um, oh, you can spiralize sweet potato and eat sweet potato and butternut squash raw. Yes, you can eat those raw and they're super nutritious and just have a really good crunchy texture. I find that when using sweet potatoes and butternut squash, you do need to have a really creamy sauce for it to be really palatable because of the starch. Otherwise, it does taste too starchy. But I mean, spiralized beets are so beautiful in a salad, especially if you do like a mix or even watermelon radish. Who has spiralized watermelon radish? It looks absolutely amazing. Let's see who's on here. Um, hi Jen, thank you for joining. Hey Sean, how's it going? I hope everyone is doing well. Yeah, I missed all of you guys, so now that I have time again, I really wanted to start doing some more live tutorials for you. Um, okay, so we're just going to talk a little bit more about this recipe. So, of course, the base is going to be zucchini noodles, and you don't have to peel it. I don't like to peel it. Oh, I just lost you guys. There we go. I don't like to peel it obviously because you get the nutrition from the skin and plus I really like seeing the color green with all of the red components that we're going to use because red and green look really nice together. Um, yeah, so this is going to be our noodle base which is the zucchini noodles and then I have some soaked sun-dried tomatoes and then they're also chopped into really small pieces. Now this is how, this is the trick on how to eat sun-dried tomatoes just like this in a dish without blending them, you want to soak them for about 20 minutes. And so before you soak them, sorry, you want to chop them up as fine as you can. So these are just chopped up into small dices and then you want to soak them for about 20 minutes and it really softens them and it actually brings out the flavor a lot more because you're rehydrating them. And so to the sun-dried tomatoes in this dish are going to give it a lot of acidity, some sweetness, as Brian would say, tomatoes are very complex. <laughs> they do add a lot of the flavor components because sun-dried tomatoes, usually you buy them already salted, so they do add a salt component as well. So you just want to remember that when you're adding salt into your dish or your dressing, that you, oh, I've just seen a really big comment, that you, um, you want to remember that there's a lot of salt not a lot. There's salt in the sun-dried tomatoes, so just decrease the rest of the salt content. Let's just see the comments here. Yin, you are welcome. You're scooping out coconut flesh from my coconut wash. <laughs> We're going to make, oh, you're going to make Danielle's recipe. So Yin is actually going to make one of the recipes from the seven-day raw food meal plan. Um, Danielle has a really amazing cultured yo vanilla yogurt pot with uh, dragon fruit um, coconut yogurt as well in there. And so that's her dessert recipe uh, for day one in the meal plan. Yay, so I can't wait to see that, Yin. Okay, so the rest of the ingredients for this recipe. Oh no, I froze on here. Okay, so the rest of the components for this recipe, I'm using um, dried olives. So who here has used dried olives? I've talked about them before in the cheese tutorial. 
I absolutely love dry olives. They give that really umami flavor, like meaty flavor to a recipe. The sun-dried tomatoes give that as well, but the dried olives are really, really umami. And you can get the dried olives here in BC from realrawfood.com or from Organic Matters. They both sell them. And these are actually, um, I think I have the unsalted herbed ones. You can get like salted or flavored or a bunch of different kinds. And then I have some dulse flakes. So dulse is of course a seaweed and this is dried and then just it's in little flake form. And this is gonna also add a bit of a salt taste to the recipe and add that kind of that um, fishy flavor because usually in a puttanesca there's like anchovies. And so this will give it kind of that anchovy flavor. Oh, you dehydrated some olives. Awesome, Brian, yeah. Really, really good flavor. Perfect. And these microgreens, you guys, so you guys all saw my microgreen growing experimentation. So these are like the baby kale. Um, this is like a mix. I can't remember the rest, but kale was the main one. And these ones lasted the longest because these have been now, I harvested them a week ago and they still look really fresh and vibrant and absolutely beautiful. Because normally in this recipe you could add parsley or some kind of other herbs, but I don't have any fresh herbs on hand. Or basil would be really nice as well. Um, so I'm going to be using a little bit of dried herbs as well in place of that. And then we're going to do some macadamia parm on top. So the, literally all you need is just some dry whole macadamia nuts and then a microplane grater. And we're just going to create like a little cheese effect on top. And then I have some fresh tomato because I like to add, even though we're using the sun-dried tomato, I like to have a bit more of a fresh component. And some lemon juice is gonna be part of our dressing plus some olive oil. Now, I don't use a lot of olive oil in my recipes, but I love it in this dish. And the reason why you don't see me using a lot of oil is because I'd rather get my fats from other things that have more nutrients like nuts and seeds and avocado. Um, but in this recipe, because it's super easy and the dressing is really quick, you just pour in the olive oil with the lemon juice and some spices, and then it just keeps it really, really simple. And then for spices, you guys can use whatever kind of spices you like. I have a dried Italian seasoning. And then I have some garlic powder because who else cannot find garlic? Fresh garlic? I can't find fresh garlic anywhere. Apparently there's a shortage. And those who know me know how much I love garlic. I put it in everything. So I'm using, I had to go buy some more garlic powder because I'm using a lot more garlic powder now instead. And then I have just some cayenne pepper because I just love having a little bit of a kick and some spice to my recipe. And then some onion powder. I love onion powder. Onion powder also gives it a sweet component and a little bit of a cook taste. Let's see, Monica, yeah, so the little ones lasted the longest too. I know and I wish that I had bought some more of these. So now I know I'm gonna buy some more of the, these seeds here that, um, that lasted the longest. Okay, perfect. I love that you dehydrated some olives, Brian. That's so awesome. I'm super happy you did that. Okay, so I'm gonna get started on this because I don't wanna keep you guys too long. Now when I'm spiralizing on my spiralizer, you have to cut off the ends. And don't throw these out. Freeze them and put them in your green smoothies. So that's what I do. I have a container in the freezer. I just throw these in and I just use them in my smoothie. Now, when I'm using this spiralizer, I like to cut the zucchini in half. Um, it's just a lot more easier than just using it um, whole. I just find it a lot more easier. Oh, Jan, you're so lucky that you found some garlic. Oh, my goodness. I'm missing my garlic already. So this spiralizer is really easy. It has a handle on the end um, and you just spiralize it like this while you're pushing the handle along with your other hand. And this is the um, smallest, I think it's the smallest noodle attachment on this one. So you, look, you just put it in like this, it's super easy. And I'm just gonna do this. You can also get electric spiralizers, but honestly, I've used them and they don't work that great. 
I mean, if you're catering and if you're doing zoodles for a large um, party, then you probably will want to use the electric spiralizer. So then I just like to cut these a little bit because otherwise they're going to be way too long. And then I'm just going to put them into the bowl. Let's just put these in here. And let's do our last one. So these, again, you don't want to throw these out, you guys. Please freeze them and put them in your smoothies because or your dressings. I put them in my dressing as well. So this, I'm just going to do the same thing. And again, I'm just going to cut them a little bit so that it's just not so, they're not so long. Or if you like long doodles, that's fine. This might be a lot, but maybe not. And again, save that. I'm just going to move this. Okay. So then we have our sun-dried tomatoes and these are already soaked and chopped. Uh, Mark, so it's the Piderno World Cuisine brand, if I say that right. It was basically, there. it was like one of the very first brands that came out with this spiralizer. And yeah, there's so many cheap knockoffs now that are not that great. This one I think was $50 um, seven years ago, so I don't even know if you can get them anymore. But it's the Piderno. Here, I'll just write that in here for you, Mark, so that you have it. Piderno World Cuisine. My stomach is growling. I'm so hungry. I haven't had anything to eat yet today. So I'm really excited about this meal. Okay, so then we're just going to put in all of these sun-dried tomatoes because it's a really big dish, really big noodle dish. And then I'm just going to take my dried olives and just slice them up and just put them into the bowl. And these are the herbed dried olives. I really like the flavor of these. I love a lot of olives. I love olives. Like when I was a kid, I always had to have green and black olives on my pizza. And it's funny because when you're a kid, like not many kids like olives, but they were always my favorite. But I liked the weirdest things when I was a kid. Like I would eat pickled jalapenos out of the jar when I was like seven years old. People thought I was weird. <laughs> what else did I eat that was really weird? It's funny because I always liked the healthy things, which is probably why it stuck with me and I eat so healthy now. I mean, my mom always says that I loved my vegetables when I was a kid. That's really like the only thing that I would touch. So I'm probably using about 10 of these, 10 of the dried olives. That's probably good enough. And then I'm going to take some fresh tomato and I'm just going to slice it lengthwise and just kind of small dice it so that we have little, I'm trying to create some texture in the salad. So if, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like big chunks of vegetables in my salad. It's really hard to eat. Like I don't want to have to take my salad with a fork and knife and chop everything up. I like everything to be small. So I'm just small dicing the tomatoes. Did you dry the olives yourself? Hi, Joe. Hey, gorgeous, back at you. Did you shave your head yet? No, you didn't. I can tell from your profile picture. We can shave our heads together. <laughs> um, no, I didn't dry the olives myself. So these are the ones I got them dried already from Organic Matters. Or you can get them from Real Raw Food. So I think that you have... Jill, because you were at that workshop with Boris, I had sent out that ingredient sourcing list to everybody who attended. So 
I have all of the links in there. Um, nope, yeah, no, you didn't shave your head yet. I have all of the links in that list I sent you, but I'll put it here too. It's Organic Matters and Real Raw Food. So this, these companies, you guys, are here in BC and Canada, but Organic Matters actually ships to the U.S. Um, a lot of my students use, uh, they order from the U.S. side of Organic Matters, and shipping is not that expensive because if you buy a huge amount, the more you buy, the cheaper it is. Perfect. Okay, so we have our... Sun-dried tomatoes, we have our fresh tomatoes, our dried olives. I'm just going to put these out of the way. So already this is looking really beautiful and we haven't even done much to it. So let's just add in our dolls. I don't want to add in too much. And then we can just add in our lemon juice and I'm just going to squeeze this but you want to do this with your hand covering so that you don't get the seeds in there. And if you take the seeds out like I did, you can just squeeze it all in. This lemon, because it's so big, it doesn't fit in my citrus juicer, in my citrus press. So usually I'll just use my citrus juicer to make some lemon juice, but I just hadn't done that today. Yeah, you're welcome, Joe. Okay, I should move this phone because it's perfect. So already the colors are looking beautiful. There's so much texture. Once I have everything in here, I'm going to mix it up with, a, um, with some tongs. And okay, so now we're going to add in our spices. Now, obviously, I don't need a ton of salt because... We already have the salt from the dolls, the salt from the sun-dried tomatoes. You don't, I like a lot of salt though. Most of you know, like I use a lot of salt in my recipes. I just like salt, but some people don't and that's fine. So I'm gonna put in some garlic powder. You know what would be really nice in here too, you guys, and some diced red onion. Oh, I should get some. I don't have any right now though, unfortunately, or do I? Monica, okay, if you don't want to order, if you want, yeah, they, okay. Thank you, Monica, yeah, they, because with this whole pandemic, Organic Matters was really, really overwhelmed with orders. So what they did is they're only opening their online ordering system at 9 a.m. and it's first come first serve until they've hit the max online orders for the day. So on weekdays from Monday to Friday, go on at 9 a.m. and you'll be able to order no problem. So put in some of our Italian seasoning. I love Italian seasoning. I use it in almost everything. That's probably a lot of cayenne pepper, but I like some spice and I'm just going to put in some of the microgreens now when I mix this up just to have some in there and now I'm just going to mix oh you know what I forgot is the oil we got to have our fat in here because to balance out a recipe you don't need a ton just a bit that was probably like a tablespoon to balance out a recipe you always have to have salt fat acid and sweet Right, so we have the fat from our olive oil. We have three different kinds of salts. We have the sweet from the onion powder and the sun-dried tomatoes, and the acid from the lemon juice. So we know that it's gonna be really well balanced and full of flavor. So already this is looking absolutely beautiful. I mean, normally I like to mix this up with my hands, but I'm going to be a lady and use some tongs today. Yeah, avocado, Joe, of course. Yes, avocado would be really good. But we're making it kind of like a puttanesca, so puttanesca doesn't normally have avocado, but yeah. I mean, of course, add another fat component for sure. And like some um, dehydrated nuts or seeds would be good in here for some crunch. 
for some more texture. So that's mixed up pretty good, you guys. Well, this is what it looks like all mixed up and I'm just gonna put it on a plate. Okay, where's my plate? Here we go. Now, plating pasta is always really difficult. It's really hard to make it look pretty. Because I mean, pasta just itself looks messy, right? Usually I like to use a ring mold. But in this case, I'm not. I'm just gonna kind of make it as neat as I can. But we don't need a lot of it to start with. I wanna get some of those really nice fresh tomatoes on there and some of the olives. Mmm. It smells so good, you guys. I wish that you could smell it. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm giving you life today. You're welcome, Joe. I'm happy I could do that. Yes, Mark, of course, you could totally sub mushrooms for the olives because it's gonna give that same umami taste. So you know what would be really good is if you sliced up some shiitake mushrooms and marinated them in tamari, soy sauce, or coconut aminos and dehydrate them for a couple hours and then add them to the dish, that would just, wow, that would be really, really good. I love marinated dehydrated mushrooms in dishes. Again, they give it... Um, Jen, yes, there's a way to soften zucchini. So the zucchini here is going to be softened because of all the salt that we added, but you can do that prior. But I just find that this is so much simpler. But before you do everything, you can, after you spiralize the zucchini, you put it in a bowl, you cover it with some salt, and then you just let the water drain out. And then you want to strain it because the salt is going to pull the moisture from the zucchini and it's going to soften them up. Um, so I do that with my raw lasagna as well. And then you just want to strain it for about 10 minutes and strain out all the water. And then they're going to be really soft, kind of like a spaghetti noodle. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Patricia. Okay, so we still have some stuff we got to put on here, you guys. So we have our macadamia nut and microplane grater. And I'm just going to do this. Like, look how easy that is. And it looks like Parmesan cheese, right? Super, super simple, really easy. We don't need a lot of fancy equipment. And then, of course, I love my microgreens. Everybody who knows me knows how much I love them. I put them on everything, not only because they are full of nutrients, but they're super fresh and they're gonna just give that. We just know, just looking at the dish, we know it's gonna be healthy for us. These are really long microgreens because <laughs> my um, stems grew really crazy. I have some other ones growing right now too. But I love, 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 love these microgreens. They're just so beautiful. And Oh, you guys, so these microgreens I got from a place in Canada here called the microfarmers.ca. I have that in the group as well. All right. So let me show you this beautiful dish. And actually, I should take a picture of this because it does look really nice. Let me show you. Doesn't that look beautiful, you guys? Look at how simple and easy that was. So simple. I mean, recipes don't have to be complicated, right? You can make a fresh, meal full of nutrients and just really fresh high raw components that are going to fill you up so i'll eat this whole salad i just put it on this plate like this just to make it pretty for you all yes yeah, very delicious. and you know i make this dish all the time because it's really easy and when so i always make sure i have zucchini in the fridge for this purpose because dried olives and sun-dried tomatoes they last for a really long time. So you just have them on your shelf in the pantry, all the other items, I mean, your spices, and then you just put it together and you're good to go. Really, really easy. Yes, very yummy, Mark. Did you guys get a good shot of that? Yeah, 
I'll take a picture too, okay? When we're done here, I want to take a picture with that phone because it always looks better. That phone is so much better. Um, so again, I just want to talk a little bit about, I know I've probably talked a little, like a lot about the meal plan. So it was just released yesterday and I, we were working so hard on it. And I had this idea back in January. I actually mess, <laughs> let's eat. Yes, I will eat it. Oh, what did I miss here? No, nothing. Okay. Yes, I'm going to eat it after. I'm going to eat this all together. Um, so I had this idea back in January and actually I had messaged Yin, who is, um, I think she's still on the live, and Rashef Yin. Most of you probably know who she is. And uh, I said, hey Yin, I have, because I'm, I really wanted to do a collaboration with so many amazing other raw food chefs. Because you don't really see a lot of that and I just feel like it's really important to bring all of our skills together and teach you that way because we all have so much to give and then together we all have so much more to give. Yeah, hey Yin! <laughs> so yeah, I had messaged Yin and I said, hey, I have this idea. I would love to do a meal plan. Um, seven days, seven days of raw food with seven raw food chefs. I was like, what do you think? Like, does it sound like silly? And she was like, she was like, no, no, that, that's a great idea. And I was like, okay, great. So I already had in my mind the um, other six chefs that I wanted to be a part of this meal plan. So when I had reached out to everyone, thankfully everyone I reached out to said yes, and they were really excited. And yeah, so the whole thing just spiraled from there and then we decided to do five recipes a day. So you have breakfast, a snack, lunch, dinner, and dessert. And then we also give you a learning topic for the day. There's 35 recipes in the book, plus all of this other learning material. We provide everything for you. So the prep schedule, you don't have to think about what, you're get, what you have to prepare for that day. We have written it all out for you and I've never seen this before and I really wanted to make sure that we did this. Be mm, this, this is just smelling and looking so good. <laughs> I can't wait to eat it. Um, oh, <laughs> and, um, oh, where was I now? Okay, the, um, yeah, so I was talking about the learning topic for the days. And then the prep schedule. So what we had done was I really wanted to lay everything out for you exactly what you have to do each day because raw food can be really intimidating because there are a lot of steps involved when you're dehydrating, fermenting, sprouting, um, waiting for things to set. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to put out all of the instructions on what to do for each recipe. So say on three days before, you're gonna start sprouting, you're gonna start getting all of this prepared so that you ensure that you have all of the components ready to go on the specified days. So that way you're gonna be way more successful than if you were gonna to have to try to figure it out for yourself. So everything that you would need is in there. We have all the quantities for the shopping list for you to get everything for the whole seven days we even teach you how to store all of your ingredients properly so that everything will last throughout the seven days. Um, we have the entire equipment and tool list um, and the Facebook community group where we're also going to be doing all the chefs are going to be doing live recipe component tutorials as well as interviews and just popping in there and checking in and giving our tips and tricks and trying to help you out as much as we can. So yeah, I mean, all it takes from you on your end is the commitment. You just need to commit to making go raw gourmet recipes. And when I say gourmet, I'm saying like these are really amazing raw food recipes. Some of them are the kind of recipes that you would go get at a raw food restaurant. Um, and because between all of us, we have so many years of experience, we really wanted to give you guys some really good, unique recipes. Actually, my day, because I really wanted to um, challenge myself for these recipes, I decided to do an entire day of nut-free recipes. So my day is all nut-free, all of the recipes, and so it's going to give you a really good idea on how to create these really delicious, beautiful recipes without using nuts. 
And yeah, so there's so much variety in there. I mean, Yin brings in her Asian influence and these kinds of recipes I have never even heard of. So I can't wait to try those. And so yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And so if you guys want to learn more about it, there's actually a link in this Facebook group with the sales page with all of the information. And yeah, so I, I really hope you, do you guys have any questions for me? Yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'd be happy to answer any. And I'm going to be popping in here and doing some more live recipe tutorials for you because, uh, yeah, I just really wanted to be doing that. And I've just been really busy getting this meal plan launched. And so um, I'm going to be popping in and saying hi more and bringing you guys some tips and tricks and raw food recipes. Yeah, so the meal plan's available, Joe. Oh, and there's a link in this uh, Facebook group. I can send you the link. Oh, I should put the link here. Let me get the link for you. And also, just so you know, it's start whenever you want. So you have access to everything all the time and you can start the meal plan whenever it's good for you. you don't have to start it right away. So Joe, I'm just gonna get you the link. I can pin this link. Okay, great. Oh, pin. There you go. So there's the link. You're welcome, Mark. Perfect. So there we have our, oh my gosh, it smells so good. Our beautiful raw vegan noodle dish. I'm going to go ahead and eat my late lunch. And it was really good to see you all. And thank you all so much for joining. And you guys have a good rest of your day or night, wherever you are. And yeah, thank you so much. So I'm just gonna end this here. Okay, bye you guys.